A red card warning makes Goria break out in a cold sweat. Then the locker shakes violently and crashes down on her. Her classmates blind the school's cameras and launch a new hunt for her. Goria fights back as hard as she can, but to no avail. With the bullies outnumbering her, she frantically runs and hides behind the stairs. But a man covers her mouth and grabs her in the stairwell. Luckily, it was her friend Talay who came to her aid. He said time gave her the red card. After all, she slapped time hard yesterday in defense of Talay. Time was so angry that he incited everyone to bully her. Goria is heartbroken when she hears about it. She never thought the man who loved her would be so ruthless to her now. Talay says people change, but now I'm willing to protect you. His sincerity helps him win Goria's trust. Suddenly, a group of guys kick down the door to the floor below. Talay forces her to go first, but he insists on staying to distract the bullies. Goria is distressed to hear his screams as he's beaten. As she prepares to go to the security guards, a dozen of her classmates swarm over her and take her to the abandoned gym. Goria tries to escape, but they push her against the railing. She gets a splitting headache and collapses in the pool. The three girls think they've gone too far. They try to call the police, but are threatened by the boys. As they try to continue their violence, a tall figure comes running through the waves. He falls to his knees in the cold water and carefully takes Goria into his arms. Ren cries out for Goria with worry and gives the others the death stare. It turns out Ren sensed the danger and ran out of the dance so he could save Goria in time. Yesterday, while shopping at the mall, he saw Talay discussing something with a group of people in the corner. He remembered that Talay had been doing something strange to Goria lately. Ren felt weird, so he took a picture of them gathering together. The next day, he showed the photos to Kevin and MJ. They thought these people looked familiar. Combined with the fact that they heard that there is now a group resisting the F4, they feel bad. Ron asked MJ to find out about Talay's background. Unexpectedly, all the information about Talay showed that he was an innocent man. Even when it came to business, Talay didn't have any conflict of interest with F4. But Ron was still unsure. He called Goria to find out about Talay. The moment Goria's call went unanswered, he knew something was wrong. Ron rushes to the school to find Goria and stop the others from hurting her. These people claim that Time gave them the red card and told them to do it. Ron tells Kevin and MJ about it. But they don't believe it. Time has changed himself. There's no way he'd do something this violent again. So they access the school's CCTV and watch it over and over again. Soon Kevin spots the bug. The cleaner suddenly jumps from one place to another. Realizing that the video has been edited, MJ is furious and decides to catch the hacker himself. Meanwhile, Ren carries Goria to the passenger side of the Maserati and prepares to take her to the hospital. Kevin calls him to tell him that the red card is fake. But before Kevin can say the name of the hacker, a stick comes from behind and knocks out Ron. It turns out that Talay was the one who gave the red card and tampered with the surveillance video. On the other hand, Time has no idea that his beloved and friend are in danger. He's accompanying his fiancée Lita to the prom. Lita presents him with a box of twisted-looking biscuits. She had noticed Time's fondness for them. As the daughter of a wealthy man, Lita had never cooked before. But in order to win Time's favor, she went to the supermarket to buy the ingredients and made a box of biscuits herself. Time has mixed feelings. Lita happily drags him to the center of the dance floor. The host asks everyone to switch on their mobile phone's torches to create a romantic atmosphere. Time can't bear to ruin Lita's mood, so he takes out his mobile phone and turns it on. But in an instant, he freezes in fear. Talay sends him pictures of the kidnapped Goria. He sends messages asking Time to go to him alone or Goria will die. Time doesn't hesitate to leave everything behind and runs out the door like crazy. Meanwhile, Goria wakes up from the coma. But she's tied to a chair and can't move. Talay takes seven students from her school and prepares to take revenge. They've all been given the red card by the F4 and bullied. So they formed an alliance to fight against F4. But the F4 family is too powerful for them to get close to them. They knew Time loved Goria. So they gave Goria a fake red card in order to make Time suffer. Time panics when he learns that the woman he loves has been kidnapped. He frantically hits the gas to save her. M. J. investigates and finds out it was all a trap set by Talay. And he did it to avenge his best friend Fufa. Fufa used to be a student at the Noble College where the F4 were studying. He's seen how deadly the red card game can be under F4's watch. Many people are bullied and don't dare to say anything. The kind-hearted Fufa didn't want to see any more tragedies. So he secretly recorded the bullying and tried to expose F4's crimes on the internet. But F4 found out about his plan and ordered their team to delete all these videos. Fufa was furious and punched time. 
But his resistance, like throw straws against the wind, fails. Eventually, Fufa was admitted to the hospital, unable to walk. The headmaster said he drowned in the pool. Everything was an accident. But anyone with eyes could see that these were man-made injuries. Fufa's father found out the truth and tried to sue the F4. But no lawyer took the case. The school won't take responsibility either. Because no one dared to offend F4. In order to pay for Fufa's treatment, Fufa's father spent all his savings and went into debt. Tele was devastated and determined to take revenge for Fufa. After all, if Fufa hadn't taken him in, he wouldn't be alive. Little Tele was an orphan. When he was being robbed by others, it was Fufa who saved him. Fufa took him home and took care of him as if he were his own brother. Fufa's father was also kind to him and offered to pay for him to go to a noble school as well. However, before Tele could even enroll, Fufa was bullied and his life was ruined. Tele knew that everything was unfair. In order to get evidence of F4's crimes, he hacked into the school system and forged his student ID to enter the school. However, the gym building, where the bullying offense was committed, has been closed. The red card game was also cancelled by Time. Because Time fell in love with Goria. Since then, Time has turned over a new leaf and stopped using violence. But that didn't erase Tele's hatred. Tele urges Goria to join the alliance and fight with them against F4. After all, F4 had given her a red card before. He denounces her for not forgiving F4. Goria understands him very well and admits that F4 did make mistakes. But she doesn't support Tele's actions. Because she thinks it's wrong to fight violence with violence. She persuades Tele to put down the knife. She's willing to cooperate with them to find a peaceful solution. But Tele has gone off the deep end and won't give up. When time finally arrives, those he once bullied go on a rampage beating him up. Bully suffers the vengeance of the people he bullied, but he doesn't fight back. On the one hand, he worries about them hurting the girl he loves. On the other hand, he knows he's done wrong in the past and is atoning for his sins. Tele raises an iron bench and tries to destroy time once and for all. Just then, Goria breaks the ropes, runs to Time's side and takes the hit. Tele stops the beating. After all these days, he knew how kind Goria was. He couldn't bear to hurt her anymore. Soon after, Goria is taken to the hospital. But when she wakes up, she's shocked to find Time's body covered with a white cloth. His friends look sad, implying that Time is dead. Goria is devastated and cries out her love for Time. As she shakes in misery, the cloth is pulled off, revealing Time's love-struck face. It turns out this is a big show they're putting on. Time takes this opportunity to finally hear Goria admit that she loves him. After being discharged from the hospital, Time goes to each of the victims of the red card game. He gets down on his knees, apologizes sincerely and lets them fight and yell at him. But Tele couldn't forgive F4. He knows F4 is so powerful that he can't push them down by himself. That's why he's going to post F4's crimes on social media. This will at least destroy the peace of F4's life. Actually, when Time arrived at the kidnapping site, the camera in the corner recorded everything. Time confessed all his crimes to them. Tele admits he took revenge the wrong way. But he must eliminate the culprits before anyone else is victimized in the future. Just as he is about to post the video, Time grabs his phone. But instead of deleting the video, he clicks the publish button himself. Time knows that he has done a lot of sins in the past, but he won't hide them now. He's willing to take responsibility and get the punishment he deserves. Goria blames him for being reckless. By doing so, he could very well ruin his life. She anxiously searches for topics about time on social media. However, nothing terrible is found. She tries to message Tele to ask for clarification, but instead she sees that he has sent a voice message. Tele starts by apologizing to her. With her persuasion, he realized that what he wanted wasn't really revenge. He also hates his violent self. And the beliefs that Fufa had taught him now make him change his mind. Then Tele says that Time's crime won't cause a big uproar on the internet. Because when Time clicked the send button, it was set to be watched only by himself. Tele is relieved and decides not to retaliate against F4. Finally, Goria and Time breathe a sigh of relief. Time confesses that he feels guilty. He will try to be better in the future and become a man worthy of Goria. With his punishment over, it's time for him to start working on his relationship. He takes Goria out on the balcony and confesses his love for her. As a shooting star streaks across the sky, Time pulls out a custom-made shooting star, a diamond necklace especially for her. On the back of the necklace, which represented his eternal love for her, he engraved Goria's and Time's names. Goria's heart skips a beat and she is about to say yes. 
But suddenly she recalls a woman and pushes him away. Time wakes up from his sweet dream. He'd been so busy atoning for his sins that he'd forgotten he had a fiancé. Goria says Lita is her friend. She doesn't want Lita to be sad. Time understands her concern. He asks Goria to give him some more time. He'll explain everything to Lita and cancel his engagement with her. Once he's sorted out all the problems, he'll come back and ask her to be his girlfriend. Goria says she believes him. As evening approaches, Goria is ready to go home and sleep. But time stops her from leaving. He begs her to stay with him and stay at his house for one more night. Tomorrow morning, he'll drive her home himself. Goria, fearing that he might do something dirty, insists on leaving. Time desperately stops her, saying he just wants to chat with her with the covers over their bodies. But his tie isn't good, and he often says the wrong words, which can lead to misunderstandings. <laughs> the more he explains, the more Goria sees him as a pervert. She kicks him in the balls and gives him a lesson about purity. Time doesn't fight back. All of a sudden, Lita bursts into the room. Seeing her boyfriend so close to her best friend, Lita is angry and sad at the same time. This is Maroon Recap. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.